Does the existence of many religions disprove the existence of God? Does the fact that there are many gods show that theism as a whole is implausible? Does it show religion is man-made? Or, to use some new atheist polemics, is this argument some sort of delusion that exists only in the minds of the unbelievers? This sort of argumentation appears to be a classic new atheist argument against theism. It runs thus. There are many gods and goddesses. It is more plausible to suggest, therefore, that the existence of gods and goddesses are made of fictional realities like leprechauns and fairies, rather than that they or it created us. For then, you would have to explain why we made so many gods. Therefore, theism is a set of logically implausible fairy tales. Unless you take the view that God made us, um, in which case it would be a lot to explain. How many, why did we in that case make so many gods? It does seem to be much, very much more probable that men and women made many gods than that any one god made all men and women and the rest of creation. It must be noted that the classic atheist catchphrase, there is not a shred of evidence for God's existence, is demonstrably false. In fact, this is just a futile attempt at phrasing an imaginary war between religion and science, when it is really just a war between two rival philosophies, that of the Platonists and Aristotelians and the modern philosophers. There are many arguments for God's existence, the contingency argument, the teleological argument, and so on, which would prove God's existence given Aristotle's view. But these same wouldn't do so given the views of the modern philosophers. Indeed, it can be said that the principal objection against these arguments is the denial of the principle of goal-directedness and the principle of causality, these principles being that which makes a scientific view of reality coherent. Each argument for the existence of God deserves a video of its own. I would, however, direct you towards Edward Fieser's Aquinas, A Beginner's Guide. Coming back to the argument, all of this is mere sophistry worth being pushed aside and stamped down on just a bit of critical thinking, something that the new atheist accuses of not having. You might as well argue that the Big Bang Theory is false and a fairy tale because there have been many theories set forward to explain the beginning of the universe, some plausible and other foolish. After all, one would have to explain why humans made up so many theories. But we can all agree that this sort of argument is fallacious. In other words, there must be a premise that connects the first claim, there are many gods and goddesses, and the conclusion, there is no god. This should be, at least according to the argument, the premise that multiplicity in theories proves that all theories are wrong. It might be objected that the argument does not rely on that particular assumption, for all the atheist is saying is that there are many gods, none of which supposedly have no evidence, therefore they don't exist. But that doesn't serve as an argument distinct from there is no evidence for God's existence, therefore he does not exist. As we've seen, it's not as if there's absolutely no evidence that God exists. Now I would agree that if there were absolutely no evidence for God's existence, it would be more plausible to posit atheism. However, there is evidence that God exists. Take the contingency argument, for example. The world cannot consist of contingent beings only for then they would depend on nothing for their existence, which is absurd. Therefore, there must exist at least one necessary being, at least one that can exist on its own. This being must have existence as its essence itself, but to say that the existence of the being is caused by its essence is to say that the being is prior to itself, which is a contradiction, and to say that there is nothing in the essence that entails its existence will be to say that it does not exist on its own. Now for further reasons, this being cannot be multiplied and so on and so forth. This independent necessary being, being itself, is whom we call God. But that's just a summary. It is just to prove that a belief that God exists is grounded in reality, and the classical atheist catchphrase is pure nonsense, magical and mythological to use some jargon. 
How about the argument about whether God would allow so many religions to exist? This is a version of the divine hiddenness argument and can be sufficiently answered by stating that God can allow evil for the sake of the greater good. All this argument from divine hiddenness can prove is that God's existence is improbable if there were no evidence for God, but not impossible. In other words, it is blatantly foolish to suggest that this argument from many religions actually works. When it comes to learning logic and philosophy, Dawkins and Co. ain't your best choice. Much worse is the case if they're teaching you religion and theology. Do you wish to have more videos like this? Smash that like button and subscribe. Also, don't forget to share this video. Thank you and God bless.